Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to define uh, cardiac tamponade. First we will define what is cardiac tamponade. Then we will discuss the causes of acute cardiac tamponade. And then we will discuss what are the chronic causes of cardiac tamponade. What are the, diagn the main diagnostic procedure performed for the patient with cardiac tamponade and what are the back triangle the main three symptoms of cardiac tamponade so we will discuss all of these points and at the end of the lecture we should know about the cardiac tamponade causes of acute versus chronic cardiac tamponade and then we will discuss about we will able to define to differentiate <coughs> cardiac tamponade with other heart related abnormalities like endocarditis myocarditis versus ischemic heart disease and what are the main diagnostic purpose and how to evaluate and how to deal with these types of cardiac medical emergency so normally this is a very simple diagram of heart and surround the heart we know there are three main layer the endocardium myocardium and the outer is the pericardium now fluid present within the pericardium is called pericardial fluid and the normal value of pericardial fluid is 50 ml the main purpose of pericardial fluid over here is to provide free fractional environment for the mechanical function that is contraction and dilation of the heart if fluid accumulate within the pericardial cavity and the fluid exert a pressure which cause the heart to strangulate so is called the condition is cardiac tempo net and if the pressure accumulate but it do not exert a pressure and don't disturb the mechanical activity of heart so we simply call pericardial pericardial effusion so how we define cardiac tamponade so cardiac tamponade is a cardiac medical emergency in which the intrapericardial fluid pressure is increased which cause the heart or which cause abnormality in the mechanical function of the heart so simply fit uh, pericardial uh, when, uh, whenever pericardial fluid pressure is increased more than the atrial pressure we know normally atrial pressure is 15 millimeter of mercury so if the pericardial pressure is in more than 15 millimeter of mercury is called the heart to strangulate and the heart not caught in the heart will not be able to perform mechanical action that is pumping so we call this condition this is cardiac tamponade and pericardial effusion is abnormal accumulation of fluid of pericardial fluid is called pericardial effusion now what are the causes of acute cardiac tamponade so the causes of acute cardiac tamponade first one is trauma these are the causes in which abruptly and in very short time duration and suddenly the pericardial fluid accumulate surround the heart and which cause acute cardiac tamponade. 
द फर्स्ट वन इज ट्रामा वी नो फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ ब्लड ट्रामा टू डेमेज द फेरिकार्डियल टिश्यू और मसल्स ऑफ द हार्ट सो फेरिकार्डियल फ्लूड rapidly increase and it cause the increasing of intrapericardial pressure so the heart may not be able to contract and dilate effectively the second cause is aortic dissection how aortic dissection cause acute cardiac tamponade let me draw a very simple diagram of the heart we know aorta originated from the left ventricle and it is the some parts of the aorta is surrounded by the pericardium for example this is the wall of aorta this is the wall of aorta and this is pericardial layer of the heart let me enlarge these area into another diagram for example this is aorta and surround the aorta some of the parts covered by the pericardial layer when there is the rupturing of aortic wall so blood may easily come into pericardial layer very rapidly and the patient develop acute cardiac tamponade this is one of the condition in which pericardial synthesis is contra indication very cardio synthesis is contra indication because very cardio synthesis is a sim as a surgical procedure in which the cardiac thoracic surgeon cut in the chest cavity and draw the fluid with the help of needle but in this case most whenever you take the blood from the pericardial cavity so from the aorta at the same time blood will move into so more of the blood you drain from the pericardial fluid more of the blood will enter into the pericardial cavity because the aortic wall is ruptured so this is the second condition uh, first condition in which the pericardial synthesis is contraindication next cause of aortic dissection is first wall in my as you know in first myocardial wall infection the scar tissue become soft and then due to contraction in due to mechanical function of the heart these membrane these scar tissue around the heart is ruptured for example this area is scar tissue after mi and it becomes soft after few months it becomes soft so the blood come out from the heart to the pericardial tissue and very rapidly 
increase the intrapericardial pressure so this is the another condition in which the pericardial synthesis is contraindicated the more you pump the blood from the pericardial pituitary the more blood will come out the more blood will come to pericardial cavity so the patient may develop hypo volumic shock so whenever you draw or whenever you perform pericardial synthesis and the blood come out it if it is dark bright and it is clot so stop the procedure because you drain arterial or highly oxygenated highly oxygenated blood oxygenated blood this is the one sign of arterial blood drainage that is promptly coagulate or clot within the syringe or the bag attached to the needle inserted into pericardial cavity now the causes of chronic cardiac tamponade are first one is new flasm <laughs> new flasm in which this is a condition in which abnormal growth of the pericardial tissue and the patient may develop cardiac tamponot after months and year second cause of chronic cardiac tamponade are tuberculosis at some moment unfortunately the causative agent of tuberculosis that is mycobacterium tubercoli reach to the myocardium of the heart and cause infection within the layer of the heart so it may the patient may develop cardiac tamponade and the third cause of cardiac chronic cardiac tamponade are it is idiopathic idiopathic cardio myopathy in this condition the patient develop cardiac tamponade but after a long time number 4 cause of chronic cardiac tamponade uremic fairy carditis the uremic pericarditis is a condition in which the patient develop cardiac tamponade but after a long time of fear it another cause of chronic cardiac tamponade is bleeding that is post cardiac intervention bleeding which develop abnormal accumulation of fluid within the pericardium and the patient may develop cardiac tamponade and sometime we did a big mistake in a condition called acute pericarditis 
because the patient with acute fatty carditis is present with the pain and the same pain like a my myocardial infarction that is squeezing pain troubling pain and it may radiating to pain if the patient present with these type of symptoms and we did a big mistake and gave them anticoagulant so so anticoagulant coagulant are contraindicated in acute pericarditis because if you give the patient anticoagulant they may bleed in the pericardial layer and patient may lead to death if unappropriately treated now the sign main sign and symptom of cardiac tamponade are number 1 jugular venous pressure increase number 2 bp decrease means patient presented with hypotension and increase jugular venous pressure and the third symptom sign and symptom sign are muffled muffled heart sound heart sound that is short heart sound or absence of heart sound we will discuss how in cardiac tamponade jugular venous pressure may lead to increase how the blood pressure decreases decrease and the patient may develop hypotension and why during auscultation the heart sound is so up sometime it may not listen able so first we will define hypotension in a patient presented with cardio tamponade the another very important clinical sign are pulses para doxis what is pulses para doxis let me define first normal physiology that during during inspiration the lungs are expand expand so we know if the lungs are expand during inspiration so blood to the heart go less so if the during inspiration the lungs are expanding the pulmonary veins are expanded so less resistant by the lungs and pulmonary vein the circulation toward the left side of the heart is decrease and if the volume in the left ventricle volume in the left ventricle is decrease so stroke volume should be decrease and systolic blood pressure should be decrease so during inspiration we know normally the lungs are expanded in a pulmonary vein resistance decrease so less blood flow to the right chamber left chamber of the heart 
and less stroke volume lead to less systolic blood pressure and during expiration during expiration during expiration the lungs are collapsed lungs resistance increase during inspiration the lungs resistance increase and whenever the lungs resistance increase pulmonary vein resistance increase so more blood come to the right chamber so more stroke volume and more systolic blood pressure normally during expiration normally during expiration the systolic blood pressure the systolic bp is higher than during inspiration during inspiration this difference may not be or uh, this difference during inspiration and during expiration in a systolic blood pressure should not be more than 10 mm of mercury if during inspiration the blood pressure systolic blood pressure is decrease more than 10 mm of mercury so we simply call them pulses paradoxes and if the difference in systolic blood pressure during expiration and inspiration less than 10 millimeter of mercury so we simply call them this is the physiological drop of systolic blood pressure but if these this difference is more than 10 millimeter of mercury during expiration and inspiration of the systolic blood pressure so we simply call this is pulses paradoxes now jvp pressure how increase in a cardiac tamponade because the heart whenever the heart is strangulated the heart is not completely opening the chamber of the heart is not properly contract and dilate so this is inferior vena cava and this is superior vena cava so the blood may accumulate in superior vena cava and then superior vena cava interconnected into the jugular vein so pressure when blood is accumulating in jugular vein or superior vena cava then it definitely increase pressure in the jugular vein so patient may may be present should be presented with jug increased jugular venous pressure and now diagnostic procedure diagnostic test for cardiac tamponade first one is echocardiography the echocardiography show right atrium right atrium diastolic collapse diastolic collapse right ventricle right ventricle diastolic collapse and abnormal wall motion because the heart are swinging swimming in the pericardial fluid so abnormal motion of the symptom abnormal abnormal motion of 
term and inferior and superior vena cava should be dilated on echocardiography if you perform echocardiography of the patient with presented with acute cardiac tamponade now ECG ECG show electrical electrical alternates and is low voltage low voltage ecg st segment is elevated and fear interval ecg is decrease now management of cardiac tamponade so management of cardiac management of cardiac tempo net pericardial synthesis is a very common surgical procedure pericardial synthesis is performed by the cardiac thoracic specialist surgeon another surgical procedure is pericardial window pericardial window and sometime most important when the consultant or cardiac thoracic surgeon drain only 10 ml 100 ml of 100 ml of 100 ml of pericardial fluid from the total of 500 ml the fashion may dramatically hemodynamically stable for example if 400 if the volume of pericardial fluid is 100 200 300 and 400 fresh air may not increase at 400 but whenever the fluid pericardial fluid is increased up to 500 ml the patient develop increase intra pericardial pressure and develop cardiac tamponade it may presented with increased jugular venous pressure pulses paradoxes hypotension may lethargic restlessness and may develop a chest pain so whenever the cardiac thoracic surgeon drain 100 ml pericardial fluid from the pericardial sac the patient may dramatically hemodynamically stable because these 100 ml of accumulation of fluid causing intrapericardial pressure to rapidly increase and whenever the consultant or cardiac thoracic surgeon then 100 ml of pressure the remaining 400 ml flu abnormal fluid is present but the pressure exerted by 400 ml is very less so patient may not develop cardiac tamponade thank you very much